yeah, I really didn't have an opening for this one, so I'll just get right into it. Gonna make a French pâté, a country pâté. It's an awesome dish, especially if you're cutting or bulking. It's fairly calorie dense, very fulfilling, and it's just straight up protein. Before you get started, give your hands a wash with tactical soap. Links in the description, by the way. Everybody loves to smell like cedar wood. The ingredient list is pretty straightforward. Take equal parts a liver, in this case pork liver, but you can use chicken, uh, a medium ground pork, a medium sized onion, or in my case three small, same as a couple cloves of garlic, a quarter cup of heavy cream, and a half cup of breadcrumbs, as well as one or two eggs. You're going to blend it all together, add whatever spices you like. In my case, I keep it fairly straightforward, we'll talk about it later. The only thing I'm doing here that you want to change up is there's sometimes like a sinewy part of the liver. You just want to cut that out because it's not going to work well with your end recipe. So on to the topic. Chore play. You can't negotiate desire. Enthusiastic desire. I don't care if it's a wife, a girlfriend, or just some girl you met last night. When some new girl tells you that you can't buy her affections, you know this. So no guy buys a girl dinner expecting that she'll put out. Something changes though once you enter a relationship. A lot of guys think the game changes. And I'm here to tell you, it never changes. You cannot negotiate desire. Enthusiastic desire. And this video is going to tell you why that is and what you can do about it. So this is a pate and we're going to go over chore play. Both are messy, both involve taking things that nobody likes and making something wonderful out of them. I'll paint you a scenario, and I guarantee it'll resonate with at least a few of you out there. You and your wife, girlfriend, long-term relationship, haven't had a good romp in weeks. Months? Years? Ah, you poor schlub. You get increasingly irritated and start to open your stupid mouth. You talk about sex as if you were talking about a list of demands. Probably sound a little bit whiny too. And it's something everybody hears. Well, maybe if you did more dishes around here, I wouldn't be so stressed and we can have sex more often. And because she's not just some random girl you met last night, she's a girl you've been with for years, so of course you'd take her at her word. And you dutifully do more dishes. Doesn't matter how long your workday is or how short hers is. Maybe she has to get the kids lunch ready in the morning and then sit around until 3 p.m. to pick them up from school. Maybe you're both working and at the end of the day, you're both not wanting to put any work into cleaning the house. So I'm here to tell you, none of that matters. Not one bit. If a girl really does desire you, she's going to crawl through broken glass to be with you. I mean, do you really think stress is what's keeping her away? Nah, fam. Stress and anxiety are... Two of the top aphrodisiacs out there. Why do you think Dread Games works on dead relationships? By the way, check out my video on Dread. It's another French recipe, Madeleine's. I've attached it to the end cards. So do you really think a sink full of dishes is what's keeping her away? Go talk with any guy who's been successful with women. A lot of them will tell you that some of the best times they had is when they were living like a bachelor with a mattress on the floor. I remember in my first condo, I didn't even have a floor. It was a cement slab, and it never held me back. So do you really think the lives of two people in the first world is so hectic that it's impossible to find the time to enjoy conjugal visits that even inmates can afford? Come on, do you really buy this? Eh, come on, it's getting stuck at the top. It's gonna happen, you just want to get this ground into a nice, consistent paste, so... Every now and then, just take the lid off, spoon everything down, give it a little time. You can sit here and watch me fiddle around with it. Anyways, look, if you've not done this dance before, this runs in a few different ways. Either you do the chores to your standard or to hers. Either you do the chores on her timeline or on your own. If you do them to her standard and on her timeline, she doesn't have a man. She has a plow horse. No one seals sexy around their plow horse. If you do them to your standard and on her timeline, she doesn't have a man. 
She has a child. She has to constantly nag to do anything. If you do them to her standard and on your timeline, she's frustrated. You're frustrated, and everybody leaves with dry dicks. And you know the weirdest part? In that moment that she tells you that you need to do more dishes, the girl believes with all of her heart. She really thinks that it's stress or chores that's what's killing your bedroom. But it's something I always repeat to my clients. You have to lead your relationship, and this is no exception. She really thinks that by nagging at you to do this stuff, that you guys are going to come out the other side with her sexually ready for you. And like I've already said above, and what you've probably already experienced, once it happens the way she wants it to, no one is any happier. Not with the state of the house, not with the relationship. Now I promised you a strategy around this, so here it is. Keep your house to the standard you set on the timeline you want. The attitude that you must have with this is that I'm going to take care of my house the way I see fit. If she wants somebody to wipe the cloth counterclockwise instead of clockwise, throw her the cloth, she can do it herself or shut up about it. But wait. You're probably thinking, what's the point of this? You're telling me that she can nag me to do the dishes and the end result is I'm still doing the dishes? Bear with me. You're kind of missing the point. The point here is about ownership and mindset, not sex. Walk this through. Let's say you have a real lazy woman on your hands. Let's say you're working, she's a stay-at-home mom, and you're still doing everything in the house. At some point, you're going to look at all this work you're doing, all this value you're providing, all the workouts I've been telling you to do, all the great diets you've been doing, all the pate you've been eating, the six-pack you're building, and then you're going to look at all the work she isn't doing, as well as all the sex you aren't having, and you're going to have a thought. Well, first you're going to butter the inside of the tray here. We're going to have two trays because we're going to do a water bath for more consistent cooking. The thought you're having with the relationship, though, is why exactly is this woman in my life? She's not making me any happier. What does she do? And once you have that thought, you can start to value your own worth. Worst case scenario, you're telling her to hit the bricks. Chances are, if you've been following any of this advice I've been giving you over the years, being a man with his act together and the muscles and charisma to match, you'll have no problem replacing a low-value leech with a much better woman. But it never usually comes to that. In about 99% of the cases, she starts to get anxiety. Not this, no one ain't done the dishes crap, I mean real anxiety. Where in your roadmap does she fit? What does she offer? Why is this guy acting if I'm not part of the relationship? This is the ugly part of the work. Same as this, you can't be afraid to get your hands in there. Maybe it's just because I'm from a ranch, but I had no problems touching meat. So if you got queasy sensibilities, something's wrong with you. Just fish it out there, keep the air bubbles out, and level it off on the top. Where was I? Oh, yeah, the 99% of the cases. So she's going to start to think to herself, why is this guy acting as if I'm not part of this relationship? Now there's your anxiety. There's your stress. You didn't cause it. You didn't want it. You have one goal. Your goal is to be a high-value man and surround yourself with valuable people. Most women see that writing on the wall and start acting better. A lot better. And it's not even a, a conscious choice on their end. There's just something about a nice quality man that really encourages the girl's emotions to make her start acting right. Sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? Well, this pate is a lot of work, but now I'm going to be set for the month. Sometimes think we want just take effort. You'll just have to get used to it with whatever girl shares your bed with you at the end of this. When we're filling up the water bath here, you want it up about a third of the way. This is going to do two things when you put it in the oven. One, it's going to keep the pan from browning the outside or the top too much. 
as well as the steam it creates are going to keep the temperature in the oven fairly consistent. Once you're finished though, you want to season it as you see fit. In this case, I just went simple, a little bit of salt and pepper and paprika. But your choice of ingredients are as varied as your preferences. You can basically use anything here. Cloves, garlic, ginger, whatever. What you can also do to keep the top from browning is you cover the top with either bacon or a gelatin. Just something to cover over the surface area. Then you're going to throw it into the oven at about 250 to 300 degrees for an hour. Then once it's done, you're going to pull it out. You're going to notice when you do this, it's almost going to look like it's not cooked yet. That's a good thing. It's going to have, if you've done this right, it's going to have a very pink texture to it. The outsides might have a little bit of gray, and that's fine. Anyways, once you pull it out, you want to get a heavy counterweight on top of it. In this case, I'm just using one of my heavy cast iron pans. It's going to have a bulge, and you want to compress it down, leave it in the fridge for at least an hour. Overnight's even better. In my case, I was a little bit too impatient, so I let it sit there for maybe 45 minutes, gave it a flip around, put it here. If some people don't like the idea of seeing the pink meat exposure here, what you can do is make a quick coating with breadcrumbs and black pepper and just coat over top the whole thing. It makes it a little more presentable for your vegan friendly friends. And if you leave this in the fridge overnight, all of the fats will start to solidify and this is going to have the texture of a nice thick peanut butter. But in my case, yeah, I got to finish filming, so I'm going to eat the piece right now and call it a day. So thanks for sticking this out with me. I hope you learned a quick and easy strategy about chore play that isn't quick or easy. As always, catch me on Saturdays for the Red Morning Podcast at 9 o'clock on YouTube, where I talk with Carl from Black Label Logic on dating, relationships, and we discuss a lot of the strategies like this over Caesars and Bloody Marys. Then we have over the Red Man Group, a podcast we do with Rolo Tomasi and Donovan Sharp, plus others at 11. You can follow me at Instagram and Twitter at underscore Ryan underscore Stone. Links in the description. And finally, check out RyanStone.com where I talk about these topics and consult men on their relationship struggles. We go over everything. And by the end, a guy will have the kind of life he didn't think was possible. Links to this is in the description. And I'll end this off with a shout out to Tactical Soap. One of the few brands out there who supports the work we do here. It's not often you see a company actually supporting men, and I really hate my girl's lavender body wash. So it's win-win. Take care.